What is up everybody, Escape211 here, and we are going to be doing an Is It Good for the Mini Chain Gun. Alright, or Mini Gun, whatever you want to call it. I, I like to call it the Mini Chain Gun. Um, but uh, this is a weapon that's fairly new, but I've had a lot of people, especially with different events that have come up out, um, and the new 16, and people are asking me, Escape, is this a good weapon? And I think... Unfortunately, it is not really a great weapon. There are some things that are cool about it, but I don't think enough that makes it a good weapon for a lot of people to focus on. And here is why. Number one, suppression weapon class. When we did light mechs in the past, I always talked about how light mechs in general were too expensive and it just was hard to, you know, think of using the resources for that versus like the medium and the heavier mechs, all right? Now, when we look at the weapon class, suppression in general, which is assault and this new heavy duty class, both struggle in the meta based on how they perform compared to other weapons. Now, historically, like when you look at beta, suppression was actually a pretty good class, especially like the carbines, all right? Even the pulse cannons did decent, but the carbines especially, they were a really good weapon to round out your hangar. They were reliable in all situations. They haven't changed in some sense, but because the meta has changed drastically, the suppression weapon class period just does poorly compared to other weapons that do a lot better. A mixture of that is the different weapons that have come out and pilots as well, but overall, it's just a class that struggles. Even when you think of this as the new legendary weapon and it's, you know, pretty beastly, it's got some impressive stats in some ways, it's still just not going to cut the mustard because of how suppression works in the current meta. Number two, high exposure. This kind of goes along with the suppression class already because suppression is usually about throwing down a lot of ammo on the opponent to, you know, suppress. Um, so it forms, you know, or it has a function, I would say, but in terms of how this meta currently works, especially as we added pilots, damage has been king and the HP of mechs has not quite caught up. So anything that allows for more exposure time is less favored just because it just it's going to be easier for you to die. You're, you're going to, it's going to be easier for your mech to die, simply put. All right. A lot of things just kill too fast and with the added damage of pilots and implants even faster. So it's just that anything high exposure is not favored. This is always the case even before low exposure stuff has always been favored. But as the meta has changed more and more toward a damage meta, that's even more apparent and makes it even harder for a weapon that has this level of high exposure attached to it. Number three, too many negative traits. Now we already know that suppression weapons like this will have a high exposure time, but this weapon also has some other negative traits associated with it. Now, of course, it has an impressive amount of damage it can output if you look at its uh, you know, stat sheet, as well as a huge clip. So you really do pay for that by having a really long reload time, um, a low accuracy because you have a big cone of fire and a 50% penalty to your turning radius for the heavy duty class. All right. So these in and of themselves aren't the worst. All right. There are other weapons that have long reload times or, you know, poor accuracy. But when you combine all these together, it just makes this weapon below average. In my opinion, it fits, you know, similar to other suppression weapons, but maybe a little bit below some of them. Even I mean, arguably, this could be considered below carbines just based on how it functions. You also have that spin up time in the beginning, right? I'm, I totally forgot about that one. So you actually have a mixture of all these negative traits working against the weapon. Now, you can can, of course, um, use implants to shore up some of these weaknesses, which is nice, but you aren't really getting full advantage, all right? A lot of times, you start with a good weapon, you add the implants to make it even better and just kill everything faster and just perform better on the battlefield, but this one, you're forced to use your implants to try and shore up weaknesses, which usually isn't as favored just because it's going to leave you with, you know, a fairly decent or average weapon instead of one that is going to crush on the battlefield. So uh, I think the negative traits just really hold this weapon back, especially because you need to use your implants to try and deal with that factor. Number four, poor pairing options. Now again, this is all stemming from the idea of how this weapon works, but when you look at the different mini guns we have, we have a lot actually. We have a six, an eight, a 10, a 12, and a 16. They've been doing this more lately where they release a full suite of the different weapons, five in each, all right? Sounds really nice in theory, but not many people are gonna use the six. It's gonna have very limited use early game. The eights even for light mechs are not as favored just because again, you're talking long kill times, especially as an eight energy weapon. The tens also has limited 
you know, spots that it could be used. 16 makes a lot of sense because it has all that uh, damage that it's going to do and kill things decently, but there aren't many 32 energy mechs that are going to play this well. And if you're curious about that, Ruffles does a great video showing different ones that he's paired the 16 with and kind of talks about why none of them are exactly ideal for, for running this. There's a couple that are decent, but not really great. The best option so far for me has been the 12, all right? The 12 has, has given you the best case use where you can use some of those tanks to be tanky or something like, you know, an Ryan or um, Stalker to just get in the kind of damage that you want, but still not exactly favored either. I mean, it's going to limit the options of what you can do just based on how this weapon works. So when you look even at the different categories of weapons that you can use for this, it's still going to feel a bit limited over what's going to be best and what's going to actually do well for you on the battlefield. Number five, premium price tag. This may be a little unfair to throw on the minigun right now just because, you know, this may not be the case for long term. But uh, I still think it actually has some validity and I'll talk a little bit about that. Currently, this weapon is not one where you can really get it on the progress path or any other way, realistically, aside from like playoffs or a special event or spending to buy it. So if it's something that you're going to buy or you're going to, you know, have to earn or work really hard to earn, you want it to be worth its value. And right now, just given what I've said already, it doesn't feel worth that value. Now, some could argue that, okay, well, this might be on something that's, you know, the content delivery system they're going to do in the future, which is true. And they could do that. But the, the only model we have to compare that to is the progress path. And the progress path it, it, whenever you put a uh, legendary weapon on there, it gets expensive, like six to seven K at least. All right. When you look at the Carbine 12, it doesn't feel like it's worth it anymore. So I can't imagine you're going to have a similar, you know, or a better situation with this weapon, especially when you're considering a 12 and 16 legendary weapon. All right. Those are probably going to be a lot of eight coins in the content delivery system as well. And as it stands, I just don't think they're going to be worth it for anybody to either spend real money on or their hard earned eight coins. And that covers it, guys. That is why I don't really think this weapon is uh, so good. And like I said, it's not that this is a bad weapon, but I don't really think it is worth it right now. I do hope there are things that could change about this and just suppression in general or assault, whatever you want to call it. Uh, unfortunately, it's just a weapon class that is um, not doing so well. And I think, you know, even this being the quote unquote height of it uh, also is not doing very well so um you know i'm curious to hear what you guys think about the weapon currently or things that you could see changing about it that would help it be a little more competitive in the meta but uh that is all we're going to be covering for this one you guys and we will see you out there on the battlefield <laughs>